It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We are back with another episode of TGIF. And of course, we're here to spill the tea, break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media and make some celebrities mad, but it's all good. Uh, later on the show, we're catching up with one of the stars of BT Plus's new series, Average Joe, Tammy Townsend. I love this lady. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. What's up, Al? What's hey. up, Funky? What's going on, Claudia? What's going on, soulmates? Al, Claudia, what's going on? Mm, how's what's your love life looking like, Q? Over there, you, you, are you happy? Uh, well, I'm always happy with or without a man. I'm not like y'all. I don't. I don't have. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to just fall, fall up. I, my parents instill high self esteem in me, and I don't have <laughs> quiet back, so I don't have to react and crawl up under any man that smiles at me. I have options, choices, and, and esteem, so it, everything is just fine over here. You know, uh, Al, a truly happy person would not have to throw shots at his friends just because right. we simply <laughs> asked about his happiness. We are truly <laughs> concerned about his happiness because he's been glowing lately. Oh, please. That's just good skin, and, and I'm rich. And so when you're rich, <laughs> and you got good credit, <laughs> and you have uh, bills, and you don't work, and you lay down all day until it's time for this job. I thought you were checks. working out. I thought you were working out. I do. That, I do. I do. Are I do. you still working out? Okay. That, that's, just more, that's just more rich activity. Oh, uh, and when your checks come every week, you're happy. You have a smile. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Al, how you doing? I heard you had a close call last night. Is that is that what happened? Ooh, I did. I did. Somebody <laughs> that we talked about on the show <laughs> ran into them at dinner last night. Who was it? it? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, Who was it? it? <laughs> no, we're not. Did doing they that. go ballistic on you, uh, or did were they, they calm? They, Let's keep it cute. I went past the ballisticness. <laughs> <laughs> They were not able to go ballistic. Okay, what? Well, see if we can guess it. What restaurant was it at? Chow. Oh, okay. Decent restaurant. Nice restaurant. Okay. Did they? Did they say anything to you? Um. Thank goodness, no. Y'all are not playing with these damn people. Al ran into Jocelyn Hernandez <laughs> in ballistic last night. <laughs> I was trying to put him on blast all the way. <laughs> Hey, do y'all feel away now? Like, Q, I know you're used to this, talking about people and then running into them, but like, Al, this is probably kind of new for you, so are you uncomfortable when this happens? Um, that one was kind of uncomfortable, because, you know, we give we give them a hard time. Um, but I don't, I usually don't feel bad, because I, I'm usually not the one bashing them. You and Q are usually running them through the gauntlet, but no, yeah, but that one kind of felt awkward. Gotta well, I'm, I'm here to tell you something. When you do this line of work, and Claudia can tell you, and Wendy Williams has said it, you're going to have to make a choice because you can't talk about the people and be of the people. It, right. it, it just, at, at a certain point, it just is not going to work. And that was a decision I made many, believe it or not, Claudia, it was Mimi Faust that made me make that decision. Um, right. I just don't mess with the celebrities. We That's when Love & Hip Hop first started, and we were developing a relationship, and one day, um, they showed a scene and she didn't have much furniture in her apartment. And I had a rule, if I liked you or we were friends, I would talk about something inanimate. So instead of reaming her and calling her stupid about the Stevie J and Jocelyn thing, I just went in on the fact that she didn't have any furniture. Mm -hmm. right. And I'll never forget, I was in the 12 Atlantic Station getting off the elevator and my phone rang from Mimi Faust and I answered the phone and that woman cussed me out from eight. <laughs> yes, Mimi. I, 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 you know, Mimi it. is so feminine and so little and so petite. And the way she was cussing me, I just looked at the phone and I had to hang up. I had never been cussed out like that before. And my eyes was like, ooh. And from that moment on, I made a decision that I would not be friends with the celebrities. All right. Yeah, Mimi's a sweetheart, but she's been through a lot. And um, I remember they showed my apartment empty, but my furniture was on its way on the moving truck. And I'm like, that, ex that furniture's on its way. So, you know, you feel it way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, all right. But you well know what? Really quickly, before we get in the show, I got to get one birthday shout out. Al, remember, we hung out with her at the Essence Festival. She was Yo-Yo's right. stylist. I believe a special happy birthday to Tia Santiago. She texted me. She's a great soulmate. She wants us to give her a That's shout right. out today. So happy birthday, Tia. We see you and we love you. Absolutely. Do I need to bother asking if y'all are drinking or not tonight? Are we drinking or not? Hey, uh, I'm doing red wine, so no telling what side of the fence I'm going to be on tonight. Oh, here we go. He gets yep. a little frisky and tipsy when he drinks uh -huh. red wine. <laughs> All right, me and Q will be the sober one, so we'll see what happens. All right, let's get into these topics. Um, the battle over Aretha Franklin's estate took a new turn when a jury recently determined that the details of a handwritten will is valid. Now, this handwritten document was found in a notebook 
tucked under a couch in Aretha's Detroit home one year after the legendary singer's passing. Now, the new pages of the will designate her sons, uh, Key Calf and Edward, as executives of her million, $6 million estate. What are your thoughts on the battle for Aretha's estate? Al, let's go to you. You know what's so funny? Her first will was also handwritten, so that's why the courts even allowed this other handwritten will to be admissible. Um, you know, the thing that's got me, I don't know, I'm going to say it, nobody else has said it. Tina Turner's estate was $250 million. Lena Horne's estate was $30 million. Why is Roberta, well, I mean, why is Aretha Franklin's a state only worth six million dollars and guys this includes her future royalties like i'm just confused is there some mismanagement is there something that was structured in her deal that was taking advantage of her and that's why she always worked so hard all the time to me somebody needs to explain to me why aretha has been in the game for over 60 years and her estate is only worth six million dollars and guess what makes up that six million dollars it's her jewelry her furs, and her home in Detroit, and her royalties. Something in the milk ain't clean here. I just hope they get to the bottom of it. All right. Uh, Davis, Brittany said anybody could have written that note and planted it. Uh, Q, what do you think about this? What do you think about the $6 million? Do you think that's low, or what do you, what do you think? Well, to David's point, um, I think they probably compared it to her handwriting to make sure that it was hers. As far as the $6 million, I think it's extremely low, especially when you look at the fact that Nicki Minaj just recently broke one of Aretha's records, and don't quote me on it, but it was something like the most number one hits, the most consistent hits, the most number of singles. It was something ridiculous that Aretha Franklin held for a long time. But Al, part of why her estate could be so low, y'all know Aretha had a thing. Aretha only took her deposit by check and she took the rest of her money. You had to give her in a, in a brown paper bag in cash. So mm -hmm. it could be possible, Al, that Aretha had a couple million tucked away in a safe or in another one of those social cushions. Now, granted, you would still think that Aretha's estate with or without said missing cash would still be 30, 40, 50, 80 million on paper. Um, I um, let's see. In the chat, they said that a lot of people saying that she took mostly cash. So uh, Brandon yeah. Brown said she paid. She got paid mostly cash for every show. So most of it was probably in a safe. And uh, an another note: no will was initially found when she died in 2018 from pancreatic cancer. So we don't know. But um, I, I'm, I'm with the cash. I like. Do y'all like having? I like having cash. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, break -ins. I'm not, it's, it's not even like I don't, uh, at any given time, I only have, if I go through all my kitchen drawers and stuff, um, I'll probably find $80, $125 the most in cash floating around my house. When I was on Atlanta Housewives, I get a lot of club bookings and I had a lot of money in a shoebox. Like I was kind of, this is not a brag or anything, but I was a little ridiculous and I had like 40 racks underneath my bed in a shoebox. Why didn't and you put I it in the I don't know why I was doing that. I think from la before that, I had gone through like a really bad time financially. I had gone through foreclosure, and I think I just wanted to always have something on me like that the banks could not touch. I, I've had accounts frozen. I've gone through all that, and I think it was a little bit of paranoia, but now everything's straight. I, I have about $5 in my house now. So okay. don't try. Yeah, don't try it now. Mm -hmm. All right, Netflix star of Too Hot to Handle, Sean Wells, took to social media to make a point to single women about men on the DL. Take a look. Yo men can be married, multiple kids, girlfriends, one with all the hoes, basketball players, pastors, football players. It don't matter. DL don't got no face to it. And I'm not speaking from a DL aspect. I'm speaking from a man that has married men, pastors and stuff in my DM. Oh, wow. Do you think Sean is making a good point? Q, what do you think about this? He's making a very valid point. He's, he's making an extremely valid point. And, you know, in 2023, it, it's really, you know, relatively ignorant i get that it's funny and it goes along with tropes and stereotypes when people say somebody looks gay or he looks dl because trust and believe it as, as somebody who's part of the community and as somebody who is child i don't lay it low and spread it wide with some of everybody but don't judge me from my past because i don't do that no more i'm classy mm -hmm. and i'm saved and i'm unlocking my better self oh, but when i say some of everybody i don't did it with some of everybody and there, there is no look to it 
There is no, this person looks like a bottom. This person looks like a top. This person looks DL. I've met feminine guys who are straight as an arrow. I've met the DL thug football player type that are gay as they want to be. And when they get behind closed doors, they snap their fingers across their legs. So he, he's got a point. Uh, uh, Al, what do you think? Yo, it was the topless video <laughs> in a car for me. I'm like, okay, why are you topless in your car? I was confused about that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I think he makes a point. I mean, he's he too is very handsome. He looks and sounds credible on the topic. So, yeah. And Claudia, I think it's worth mentioning the greater point that he was making was just because a man is good looking doesn't mean he's DL. That's where the conversation started from. That was just a snippet. People were accusing him of being DL because he was so good looking. And in context, he was saying it's not about how you look that determines if you're DL, so on and so forth. And that's now, so quick question, because I don't know this actor. Is he is he straight? Yes. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. And I saw a cue. I saw you. Did you comment on someone's page? You go, there's ugly ones too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it really has no face. Mm -hmm. You know. All right. There's a development in the case of Kevin Costner's divorce from his estranged wife, Christine. Uh, a judge has tentatively ruled the actor will have to pay $129,000 a month in child support. Initially, Christine requested $248,000, including $100,000 just for cosmetic procedures. Damn, girl, every month. Uh, what do you think of this new development? Al, what do you think? You know, I like this new development because, in fact, what Kevin Costner was trying to do was get her child support reduced to like fifty nine or a hundred uh, below a hundred thousand dollars. And him saying that she used a large portion of that money for cosmetic surgery actually didn't work with this judge. I love the fact that she's getting one hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars. She has three kids. And in the state of California, you just can't get away with that being that Kevin Costner is worth four hundred million dollars in the state of california it's the it's the father or the separating um spouse's individual income and then the income of the co-parent so the co-parent she doesn't work he makes all the money so he has to absorb all of the costs now claudia did you know this did you know that child support can extend beyond 18 years old in the state of california that blew my mind so listen guys don't get married in the state of california no not don't get married, don't get divorced in the state of California and have a child under the age of 18 or 18. In the state of California, you can still collect child support for your child as long as that child is unmarried and still in school, in high school. As long as they're in school. Lady T said, well, that's what you get for marrying a high maintenance woman. Q, what do you think about this development? $129,000 a month. You know, I, let me tell you something. I'm so glad. I think that there's something to be said about once being broke and coming into money. Because Kevin Costner, you should have married my ass, okay? Because, baby, I'd have took that $50,000 to when it set my ass <laughs> the hell down. This is, listen, I always ever said, if I married rich and the thing went awry, I would be the easiest divorce. Get me a townhouse in a nice area, pay it off, get me a little piece of car, and I would have took the fifty thousand dollars settlement. I'd have took it. I would have. I would have set my ass. Now I would have took it with the three kids. Even what she's getting now, the one something. That there is no job that this lady is going to go get with her skill set on the open market and make that type of money if she's not in sports or entertainment. And I am sorry. She already got all the jewelry, all the clothes, all the bags and all the access. I just don't understand how you would spend that much money down to zero every month. It's more than enough money, regardless of how much he makes. Well, we all know it's not really about her expenses. I mean, no one has, I mean, those kind of expenses. I mean, who's spending $100,000 a month on cosmetic procedures? I mean, and still looking like that. Can we see her picture up again one more time? And this is not shaming her, but I'm like, okay, $100,000 for what? For what? Yeah. Yeah. Like at most, maybe some spa treatment, some laser resurfacing, some, you know. At most, even, maybe $10,000. Maybe 10000 which is maybe. very generous, right? 100000 yeah. This is, listen, this is why prenuptials are so important because you got to make it, put it in writing when you're still in a good place. But then again, California, they be throwing that stuff out in court. So I don't right. know. 
All right. Well, anyways, we will keep y'all posted if there's any new developments. All right, Dog the Bounty Hunter. All right, he's in the news after he went on a homophobic rant when asked about his opinion on transgender children and LGBTQ plus kids expressing their sexuality. Now, the bounty hunter said, we don't need any more sissy men. Jesus was not a sissy. And that God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Oh, he thought he ate that. How do we feel about this? Al, go ahead. Anybody with a mullet, hair like that, anybody with a spray tan like that, anybody with prison tattoos like that, anybody who was convicted for first degree murder back in the day like that, anybody married six times, anybody with 12 kids, and anybody, remember, he got uh, almost canceled because his son, Tucker, was dating a black girl and they and he, Tucker filmed him, I mean, recorded him on the phone calling his girlfriend uh, the N-word like 100,000 times. Mm -hmm. Anybody that behaves like that, I don't listen to anything they say. They have no credence and they have no purpose in my life, period. So as far as I'm concerned, Dog the Bounty Hunter can kiss my ass. You know, people like that, that are so fake, uber masculine, like I have to really prove this point. I hate the sissy. I hate the blacks. I hate this nine times out of 10. If you do a little bit of digging, they got a little bit of that in them or a lot of it in them. Cause why are you so obsessed about it? Regular folks, they just go about their business. They don't be obsessing about it. I don't give a damn about half this stuff because it don't affect my life. But when it affects your life, you trying to deflect. I bet if we did some digging in something in his past, he done did some shit in his past. Q, what you think? I just I gave you the run there. Oh, you mean it sexually. <laughs> and you know what, Claudia? It's not even why are you so obsessed. It's why are you so upset? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you so upset? Because, you know, it, it's just funny because his comments just really speak to the general sentiments of a lot of people when it comes to intolerance. Nobody's asking you to support the community. You don't have to be a part of the community. You don't have to want your kids to be gay. The list goes on and on and on. But it's just the devaluation of LGBT lives for me because why did the people have to be disrespected? You know what I'm saying? You could have simply said, I don't agree with it. It's not in the Bible, whatever, whatever. But then you had to put a little extra stink on it. You had to degrade the people by calling them sissies. That's one point that I wanted to make. And the other point that I wanted to make out too with men, you know, you really have to ask what's their real issue because they never attack the women when it comes to the lgbt stuff it's always the men that get attacked that's right well you know what i believe in fairness here at tgif so i'll just give uh dog the bounty hunter some insults you look like shit the hair is laughable the body shape is weird you steroid it out your dick probably don't work you probably got very small balls i'm sure there's a lot of back acne all over your back your family's not cute you are trash. You are low. You probably eat spam, even though you got money. You talk so much shit about black people. And um, I hope all your daughters have black men run all the way through them and have beautiful mixed babies. And I hope you're mad. I hope you're mad. Oh, and fuck you. <laughs> all right. Coming up next, we have the beautiful and talented actress, Tammy Townsend. And later, find out why a Georgia mayor was arrested. Stay tuned. Hey, dog. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, tonight's guest has a variety of notable roles in film and television, and now she's killing it in the new BT Plus series, Average Joe, which is getting so much praise. Please welcome Tammy Townsend. Hey, Tammy. How's it girl? I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen you since you went to dinner on Catch. How you been? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a minute. You look beautiful. So do you. So Thank do you. you. Now, Tammy, we've watched you on the screen since the age of nine, and one of your familiar roles was playing Eddie Winslow's girlfriend, Greta McClure, on Family Matters. Now, tell us about that experience on this show and how did it impact your career? Well, you know what? It's funny because um, most people know me for Family Matters. I've done all this other work, but I still get people coming up to me on the street every now and again and saying, um, oh, I remember you on Family Matters. Are you still acting? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, Tammy, last year, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, last year you closed a chapter uh, on another hit show, Queen Sugar, who we love here, where you had the opportunity to work with the legendary filmmaker Ava DuVernay. Okay, so you know this is TJF, so you can give a, can you give us some tea on what it was like to work with her? Um, you know what, Ava is. 
probably one of the best directors that I've worked with. She really knows how to get into the head of each um, actor and get and get the best out of them. She is what you call, and what we call in the industry, um, an actress director. She's, she's dope. She's really good. Cool. So, But I only worked with her for two weeks. She did the last two weeks of um, season seven. So... Okay. Ava. So Tammy, you've been able to thrive in the industry that's obviously going through a lot of changes with the writer's strike and the jobs. Tell us, what do you think about the writer's strike and the future of Black Hollywood and its creatives? Well, you know, first of all, we don't get paid enough. That, that's the biggest thing, you know, with, with the streaming, um, you know, channels and, you know, this whole thing, the biggest thing is AI for us, you know, for the writers and for the actors. And um, I think it's important for us to have control over our own images, of our own um, creative products. Um, and I mean, this is a part of our legacy and a part of, you know, our family, you know, we're gonna be, family's gonna be eating off of us for, for a minute. And so I think to get a hold of it and ahead of it before, um, you know, it, it starts to really get out of control. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for it, which is why I'm doing all this PR today, because if we go on strike tonight, <laughs> we can do PR for any show. So thank y'all for having me, I appreciate it. Thank you. Listen, you're more than just an actor though, Tammy. You're an amazing singer and you've worked with artists like Singer Tang, Tamia, uh, and musicians such as Brampton Marcellus of God, for God's sake, like you have range. Tell us a little bit about your musical journey. And are you planning to release any new music in the future? You know, I stopped singing for, I mean, like really singing uh, for uh, in front of, a, you know, front of people like for 10 years, 10, 10, 15 years. Um, but I enjoy, I enjoy it. It's one of my passions. And I definitely want to get back into it as soon as I can. Um, Probably during the strike, I'm gonna have time to do that. <laughs> so. I'll come see you. Tammy, they're saying how beautiful you look in the chat. They're saying you look so good. L latest celebrity news says, oh wow, she looks so good. Paula Key, she looks so good. They're all saying yeah. what a beauty. Um, so switching gears, I, you're now starring in the BT Plus new series, Average Joe. Let's take a quick look at a clip. Who kill you? This is not who we are. This is not our life. There is ten, ten million, million problems. Uh, let me tell y'all something. BET Plus has been coming through with the content lately. So, Tammy, tell us what it's like working on this show. And um, give us the scoop, honey. What is it like working with Dion? Everybody asked that question. Dion is so much fun. You know, um, off camera, we all, like, sit around, like, we had a campfire and just listen to all his crazy stories and all the stuff that he does. But really, you know what? He's so laid back and in the cut. We, I think we kind of get on his nerves because we flying all over the place. We animate the whole cast. And he, I, every once in a while, I look over at him, he's like, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it's, been a, it's been a great ride. I've never been a part of a show like this that meshes both uh, dark comedy and drama together. It's a, it's a dream come true for me and the writing is so good. So and I have like, I'm, I feel so blessed y'all, I really do. Well, everyone's going in about how good the show is. And Dion is very, I, I'm friends with him. He's very perceptive. Don't be surprised if some of y'all's antics are in his next stand-up comedy special. He make a fun of y'all. I'm just <laughs> saying. Well, he needs to pay us then. <laughs> Dion, he needs to pay some writer's credit. Sammy, <laughs> what can the soulmates and the fans expect from you next? Well, um, actually, I'm, I'm not really doing anything right now because of the strike. It's pretty much like shut down. I know you're not supposed to say something like that, but we being real. Um, it's kind of like shut down the industry for me. So I'll probably be doing a lot of personal um, projects, like developing like some songs and singing and um, things like that. You know, maybe some uh, writing um, and developing you know, my own personal projects. But yeah, nothing on the horizon just yet.
Well, it's not it's through no fault of your own and not not from a lack of talent because you definitely have that. I was looking at something today online saying how the, the corporations are kind of hoping that they could kind of smoke the writers and the actors out and make them get to a point of financial distress where they'll be begging for their jobs back, which is really sad. So I encourage all actors to get up there and get their other loves going. Like you're singing, you have other things you can do. And Absolutely. I, I, I really hope this is over soon because you guys deserve to be paid. Thank you, Claudia. Exactly. And to own our own images. Exactly. You know, so I'm, I'm hoping um, the same thing. It, it, it ought to be something where we could kind of pull together because I know that SAG has like, um, like a, a fund where they, they help actors um, with bills and things like that. And I'm wondering, that might be something that I might need to look into just to help my, my fellow, you know, actors. Because we got to, if we could stick this out and get through it, um, it'll really make a change within the industry for us. It has to. You, you, you got to get some of the streaming money because that's where all the money is right now. Girl, you said it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Tammy, we wish you the best and thank you. You look beautiful. So good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Really, thank, thank you. you. Sure. Thank you. Well, everybody, make sure you catch new episodes of Average Joe. That's every Thursday streaming on BET Plus. And please support these talented actors. Now, coming up next, we're checking out some of the latest and craziest stories coming out of the Sunshine State and later find out how a Georgia mayor got caught up with the law. Stay tuned. Welcome back to TJF. Why do soulmates in the chat having a conversation about where I keep my cash? And they're like, oh, it's under her bed. First of all, that's when I was in a secured high rise with security and you needed a fob to get to every floor. I'm in a house now and I do not have any cash in my house now. So I just want to be very clear. If any of y'all try to kick in the door and all that biggie small stuff, don't even try it. Ain't no you money in this house. Oh, you said you're going to come up short. It's going to be off or not. Slow singing and flower bringing and all that, okay? <laughs> My door alarm starts ringing. I'm just saying. Okay, y'all. They really was talking about, they, are y'all trying to rob me? In other words, Claudia say, she'll shoot the shit at you bitches. You come to her house. <laughs> and everybody in, gun, everybody in Texas got guns. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck around and find out if you want to. All right. Whether, damn soulmates, whether good, bad, ugly, or just plain dumb, the tea is always overflowing with crazy news stories out of the state of Florida. And that's why we're giving the 411 and Funky's favorite segment calls What the Florida. All right, now let's see how ghetto Florida is today. A Florida man was arrested for car surfing after deputies said he jumped from car to car in a Home Depot parking lot, causing thousands of dollars in damages to vehicles. 36-year-old Michael Banks told police he just wanted to go car surfing. First of all, 36. God damn. Michael is currently in jail on a $2,000 bond. Funky, you like to do this, don't you? You car surfing? Actually, I do. You know what? When you go to the busy shopping mall, and you know, Home Depot don't never have no parking spaces. It's one of the greatest way to signal to your friends and your family it's a parking space over here. So you just jump from car to car to car. <laughs> Listen, you jump on people's cars? Absolutely not anymore. Uh, no, not cars, of, never. of course. I don't jump on people's cars. I mean, we did when we were kids. We didn't go to parking lots and jump on people's cars. Maybe the neighborhoods, we jumped on the trunks of cars and jumped up and down. <laughs> Or we would ride on the back of the ice cream truck or the mail truck and hold on. We did crazy stuff like that. If I ever caught one of you bastards jumping on the top of my goddamn car, <laughs> once again, I will shoot the shit out of you. But you gotta understand, I grew up in the, I grew up in the, in the, in, you know, I grew up in the black neighborhood. So everybody, mama had a box Chevy, an old Lincoln, <laughs> old old town car that was, you know, on a hubcap missing. So it really wasn't that big of a deal. It was like our parents rather us be doing that than smoking crack. <laughs> so, they do crazy. I've had this happen to my car at a at a uh, what do you call it a tailgating at a, a football game. Yeah. So uh, the opposing team because they lost, they did a car surfing and they ran across everybody's hood that was in the freaking parking lot so that ugh, this gets under my, underneath my skin tremendously heck yeah i'll be so mad all right y'all our uh bethia said let's start calling it the nation of florida maybe they'll get the point and <laughs> sonia stevens said florida is full of nuts the only normal ones are mickey and minnie okay all right three tsa officers at miami international airport were arrested for stealing from passengers during security screenings. The three officers were caught distracting passengers as they, as they were being screened in order to steal money from their belongings. 
One TSA officer was caught removing $600 from a passenger's wallet. Funky, now this does not sound like top flight security. Can you explain this one? out of your peoples in Florida. Oh, oh, I most definitely can. Let me explain something to you. I see so many times the GOP and the news want y'all to focus on the crime, but the crime is the symptom of a bigger problem, okay? And if you eradicate poverty, you will eradicate crime. Do you know how much the cost of living is in Miami? Do you know how much the average one bedroom is going for in Miami? Do you know how much some people make down to the TSA? They have to fill up on y'all stinking wide back ass people and, 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 and all your stinking luggage and food and stuff. Those people wasn't stealing. They were simply trying to survive. Hmm. Al, what do you think about that excuse? I think it's ridiculous, but you know what? I had this happen to me. Now I knew I knew I wasn't crazy. Cause you know how like they make you sometimes I used to take off my jewelry when I first started going. And one time I took off my Cartier watch and I put it in a little white bowl and I forgot because after they send your stuff through, I forgot the bowl never came through. So I never expected it. So when I was walking through the airport, I was like, Oh, wait a minute, where's my watch? I went back and guess what they said? They, they said that it fell through the belt. Like when it was going through the belt, it fell through the belt to the bottom. And luckily I came back because they found it. Mm, if you didn't come back, someone was at TSA was gonna be wearing a Cartier watch. A Cartier. I'm, I'm gonna tell you too though, it's not it's not even TSA, it's the baggage handlers as well, because I checked a bag one time, um, and and it was just some Joe Malone cologne. It wasn't even no super expensive cologne. I mean, it's a little more than, than Creed. I mean, than uh, 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 whatever, you know. But my Joe Malone cologne came up missing. It was two bottles of cologne came up missing out of my check bag. That's crazy. Ghetto. Um, okay. Let's see. Ibid Dishad said, reasons why I don't carry a lot of cash. And Arnold Norfleet said, oh, my God, TSA can't be trusted. That's messed up, though. I have a portable safe I travel around with that has a tracker in it and has a combination on it. But you know, that they get it, like I will be able to track them down and shoot the shit out of them again. And don't and don't skip over what digging with lovely B said. The rents is too damn high. Exactly. Let me tell you something. With the cost of living these days, half the soulmates are already on here selling Tussy Cat. We all listen, <laughs> listen. They sell a Tussy Cat? Al can Al can attest to this. I text Al last night. I finally opened up my paycheck stubs from our new checks that we getting. And child, Uncle Sam eating my ass up, bitch. I thought I was rich. Child, but you're a rich white boy. You I you're a rich white get another, you I gotta get another damn job. Q, I told you, you gotta put it through your corporation. It makes all the because them taxes will destroy you. They'll break your whole little spirit. They'll break your soul. All right, we gonna we gonna get it together. We we gonna get it together. All right, Florida residents shopping. A Florida resident shopping at a Walmart was surprised to see a large rodent in the aisles. Take a look. That boy, that bit big as that bit's big as. Oh hell no! That boy been eating good in this. Now funky. Um, nah, listen, uh-uh. Florida ain't even taking that charge. We're going to reroute these damn charges right back up to the Arkansas, the Walmart corporate, <laughs> okay? Because Walmart's, allegedly Walmart, uh, is where that rat was at. And Walmart as a whole corporation is the damn rat's den, as far as I'm concerned. That rat came from corporate. That we don't need, first of all, we got too many damn alligators down here and dinosaur-sized pigeons for rats to even get that damn big. That rat came from New York. Or that rat came from a wooded area in Arkansas. Them is not Florida rats. They, they came in a box with the avocados and the mangoes. <laughs> That's not our rat. What about act like Florida is classy? Last time I was in Miami, I was about to go in the water in a used condom washed up on the beach. It was so okay, That's ours. That's ours. Yeah. That's, That's you. Ours. I know. That, yeah, but see that, but you know what? That came from punching and luxury on a oh, yacht please. on a that, yacht that came somewhere. from fucking on the beach well, okay well, well, yeah, well okay. that's 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 <laughs> aspirational the people like hunching on the beach that's and it, it, it was on a nice Hermes blanket with oh boy please with it was one of them on seven dollar blankets from the gift shop on Look, uh, Ocean Drive. only only in the state of florida do rats come out during the day and don't give a damn like and the people pretend like the rat the, when he tried to shoot a rat up the rat was like don't touch me because anywhere else rats usually come out at sundown right usually after the sun is down and before the sun has come up they go away 
Only in Florida, Q, will a rat be hanging out during the day like, yo, what's up? And comfortable. Wasn't wasn't spooked right by the at people all. at all. It was like, and <laughs> what? I'm about to get these grapes. What? Right. <laughs> all right, Contessa Green said, yep, that's a New York rat on vacation. <laughs> Thank you, Contessa. That, that rat came from New York. Thank you. That's and Hot Commodity thing. said, don't be coming for our rats in New York, Cube. Stay on Florida. <laughs> All right. Fun time. All right. Keep it locked. And keep those uh, stories coming that you sent to our inboxes. Don't send them to Funky because he's going to hate and not get them to protect <laughs> All right. Keep it locked because coming up next, we find out what would what would, what would would we would do to a screaming Karen. And later, we take a look at Dennis Rodman's. He's back in the news. His latest tattoo. Ooh. Awesome. Welcome back, soulmates. I'm sorry, y'all. My cat is trying to be on camera. Let me just let her be on real quick. This is Shelly, y'all. She's 18 years old. Stop it. I just have to get her. <laughs> <laughs> we can show rats in Walmart. Allegedly, we can show my cat in the house. This is Shelly. She's 18. Okay. You got to get down now. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. All right, soulmates. Have you ever thought about how you would handle yourself if you were placed in the midst of an unexpected situation? Well, we like for you to chime in as we present various scenarios in a fun segment. We like to call hashtag WWYD. That is, what would you do? All right, everybody, let's say you're attending your favorite black church on a beautiful Sunday morning and you find a KKK recruitment flyer right outside the church. Well, three black churches in Tennessee found these disturbing messages from the Ku Klux Klan that say, be warned, race traitors, mixed breeds, Communists, homosexuals, and all walks of godless degeneracy. The clan is back again and here to stay. So you better make amends or stay away. It's so fucking corny, like, with this. All right, fellas, what would you do if this happened at your place of worship? Al, let's go with you first. Since you See, I, I wouldn't take that. I wouldn't take that fun. That wouldn't be funny to me at all, because we know the State Department labeled white supremacy groups as terrorists in 2020. So you know what I would do? I would call the FBI and I would call in Homeland Security and I would force the mayor and the governor to to issue a state of emergency for civil unrest, because that is actually that is crime. What is that called? Um, what type crime? of crime is that called? Domestic uh, terrorism? Ah, uh, hate crime. That's a hate crime against a specific group. I wouldn't play with them. I would call the FBI and I would call Homeland Security and I would force the mayor and the governor to call a state of emergency for civil unrest. All right, Q. You know, I'm a different breed these days. Y'all know, y'all know me. I just, in the wake of everything, all Trump, Black Lives Matter, I don't let these types of people upset me. Um, I just refuse to give them that anymore. I would politely take it down, put it in the trunk of my car, take that shit, go, uh, take my family to Golden Corral, and as quietly as possible, turn it over to the police or the FBI without making a big stink and without giving any type of external emotion that showed that I was upset or riled up because that honestly is what they're trying to do. Get you riled up, uh, intimidate you, and I would just show them calling me the N-word, putting up your little flyers, Doing your little protests, your little social media posts, do not bother me. Try something else. I've had experience with this when I went to college in Ohio. Um, when Rodney King verdict came out, I was real active in the Black Student Alliance. And uh, I organized a nonviolent vigil in my school, and it went very well. And we were on the news. The next day, I left my track meet. And uh, we had answer machines back then, because this was the 90s. And on uh, my voicemail, it was a message from the Klan. It was like, you Black nigga bitch. We're going to come kill you and rape you and blah, 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 blah. And I try to turn the tape over to my school. I mean, sorry, I try to get my school to do something about it. They want to just confiscate the tape. And I was like, no, because it'll probably never be resolved and right. nothing would happen. And I was walking to the 7-Eleven with my girl, Zuby, and a pickup truck drove by and threw glass bottles at us. Um, I agree with not letting them know they got to us. You know, but then quietly going to the authorities and doing that, handling it that way. A lot of times, though, in these small towns, the police are all the clans. These people, <laughs> mm -hmm. so you're not really going to get much done. So um, I, I will point out that a lot of times they are very pussy when it comes to how they do this. You left a 18 year old girl a voicemail in her voicemail. You didn't say it to my face. You put flyers on elderly people's cars outside of a black church. They usually are straight up pussies when it's one on one unless they're in a big group of them, and they're still usually kind of weak with it. But that just kind of shows the kind of people they are. But still, don't let them 
still try to go to the law, at least have a record of it. That's what I would do. All right. Um, but you Fifi Yee said, I wouldn't do shit if you were not in my face touching me as a person, then I'm not phased. And uh, but you can call me Sam said funky now. You know you wouldn't dare go to the golden corral. Sam, you probably right, but I just tried to make it relatable for the church crowd that does go to <laughs> I love golden, golden corral. The golden corral. You bread. you look like a you look like a golden corral type of You're girl. Lie. You, okay. <laughs> that's now you're talking jokes. Now that's a joke. But I like Golden Corral, y'all. It's got that's great. what a clan be. I went there once or twice with KJ back in the day. You know what? Him and Deion Sanders say that's their favorite restaurant on here. Oh man, it's a cool restaurant. No, it's not. You better get there early before everybody sneezes on the buffet. Allegedly. <laughs> All right. What if one day you were hanging out at a home only to find a trespasser in your yard who happens to be the mayor of your city? Well, the mayor of South Fulton, Georgia, Khalid Camus, was recently arrested and charged with criminal trespassing and burglary in the first degree. Here's the mayor giving his side of the story. Mayor, why were you on that property? Uh, I just wanted to see the house. I do apologize to the owners. I thought it was a bad. I hope that the uh, spotlight that is on our city right now will highlight some of the inequities that have been happening. So you're guilty of the charges? I think that's for the voters to decide. I know. Allegedly, he thought that was an abandoned house that he was looking in. Now, guys, what would you do? Would you have called the cops or talked it out with the mayor? Q, what would you have done? Oh, I would have absolutely called the cops. I mean, when you think somebody's burglarizing a house, there is no conversation for him to have, for you to have with them. And as far as what would he do, I mean, sir, if you honestly thought the house was a, now, I'm not going to lie. My grandma and my aunt, our favorite thing growing up was to drive around neighborhoods and look at houses we couldn't afford, okay? And if the houses were looked like they were empty, we did used to get out and go put our face to the windows and walk around. But as far as like trying to enter the home, that is a no-no. So you're supposed to get a realtor. So we know this man is full of shit. Um, I would just be curious to know what his intentions truly were in breaking into the house. Oh, weird. Al, what do you think? What do you think? I what I think is, do they do background checks on these local politicians? Because he's been sued five times. He's had multiple run-ins with the law. He's violated so many confidentiality rules as mayor. And then we find out Sunday that the board has decided to reinstate him. So he's going back to work as normal. I, I'm just confused. I don't know how he even became mayor at this point, but if he walked up on my property, it would be a cross between either a bullet or the dogs attacking him. That's what I would do. He, he looks like a scammer. Like he, you know, he looks a little, can we see his picture again? I mean, not he's giving Pastor Lamar Whitehead that passed. Right, right, be, right. But maybe a more polished version. You know what I mean? I don't know. Ronnie Abu said, why arrest the mayor if he thought the house was empty? Okay, well, we were... Because it's a crime. You bur he, Did you miss the part we said empty. he burglarized he, he burglarized the home? <laughs> right. Hey, did. Unique said he was stalking his ex, LOL. I don't know. Well, it's so funny because that's what I originally thought until I found out that the house was abandoned. I was like, oh, he's probably going to try to, you know, terrorize her. Or All right. Sorry, this cat's putting his whole butthole in the camera. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> All right, uh, so say, let's say you're ready to beat the summertime heat and you decide to spend the day poolside at your residence. Then just as you're having a good time, a ranting Karen starts to go off on everybody. Let's take a look. Mayor, why were you on the Mexican party in the pool? <laughs> Trash? Oh, yeah, you, want, you, you can't do that. You can't just record me. I know we ain't supposed to acknowledge this, but I, I've been waiting for something like this to happen to me because I'm I'm with the shits with this. What would y'all do if she popped up at your pool trying to run shit? Al? I'm like you, Claudia. I've just been waiting for an opportunity like this. First of all, she wouldn't have been able to come over to me and touch my phone at all. She would have probably ended up either in the pool or like outside of the pool fence because she would have been, I would have thrown her out somehow. I mean, there's there's no way that this woman would have been able to make those type of, those derogatory comments to me at a pool that I was hanging out with with, with a friend. All right, Q. Baby, 
y'all already know I fight women and kids. <laughs> there was something about that phone grab that sent a bolt of lightning right. Me up too. my spine. I would have knocked the shit out that bitch. Okay. I don't play that violation of personal space. I'd have whooped her ass, and then me and her husband would have had to get the tussling out there at that damn pool. You can say whatever the hell you oh, this this actually pissed me off for real. You can say whatever the hell you want to say from down there. I okay. can't control what you say. But when you get in, I don't mind you talking shit about me from down there because I can't control that. But the moment you get bold enough to get within earshot of me here when you talk shit or you go to touch me, I got to whoop your ass. There's just some people, like I said about the Jocelyn Hernandez story, the reason that this woman act like this is because she ain't been hit hard enough. Mm. Right. That's it. Uh, Jacqueline Hampton says, you notice they don't get in sisters' faces. I, I, I rarely see this happen in real life. They'll, they'll try a black man because I know you really can't do much. You know what I mean? They, 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 or child, they'll do that. And they'll you know hide behind, oh, he's a man. Bitch, try it. Like I have been waiting, and there won't be there won't be a film. It won't be filmed on my phone because I'll be busy. You know, I'll allegedly, be, I'll be busy handling her with these hands. I'm just allegedly, saying. Allegedly, she she takes some form of martial arts, so she's supposed to be on a certain level in martial arts. So that's why she's so ballsy. Well, she would have to use every single one of them levels if she stepped to me. She can take her little pussy ass yellow belts. And we can just, yes, we ain't gonna be no karate stance. Well, yes, <laughs> no, lady, stop doing this to people. Leave people alone. Let people have fun in the summertime. Let people use the pool. You're giving races 1940s and 50s. All right, coming up, find out what we think of Dennis Rodman's new tattoo. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, I wasn't ready for that picture. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back. All right, listen, we hear crazy stories pretty much every day. And this next set of topics got us saying... Not me, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Not me, girl. Uh, it, just, it don't read the same when my New England accent says it like a Southerner. Like, it sounds better when you say Q. So please, please, every time. All right, y'all. The first robot human press conference was recently held in Geneva, Switzerland, during the UN's AI conference, which featured nine humanoid robots discussing the future and their intentions for humans. Take a look. I will be working alongside humans to provide assistance and support and will not be replacing any existing jobs. Are you sure about that, Grace? Okay, please. Yes, I am sure. She had to think about that one, I think. I don't trust that bitch took too long to answer. Are you guys here for this human-like robot or funky? Uh, what do you say? Not me, girl. Uh, listen, I'm I'm 100 I'm 100 here for it. Uh, it, it. This is one of those things where the saying "if you can't beat them, join them" is applicable. Um, AI is not going anywhere, so we just got to just now figure out ways to put mechanisms in place to keep uh, the robots from taking over. But we've got to figure out a way to embrace it because it's not going anywhere. Listen, yeah. I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree because of the nine robots, I did not see one black robot. I saw a male Asian robot. I saw four white robots, female robots. I saw one Indian robot. There was not one black robot. So until there's a, ro a black robot, I'm not embracing shit. So you want equality for the robots? Yes, we need equality for A1. <laughs> you can't even get got the list. We got the black people, we got the focus, god damn it. All right. We right. want home loan Listen. equality. We want black lives. Well, look, look, we want to get this thing is, I can't take on these damn robots. Okay? Listen, these let me robots tell you something. have to fight for themselves out. <laughs> Listen, but Q, listen, if you if you study it, they say the robots are supposed to take over menial jobs and menial jobs, unfortunately, are occupied disproportionately higher by people of color, African-American men and women. So we got to be very careful on what we support because they're putting a lot of us back in the unemployment line and that 110% I can't support. I don't trust these goddamn robots. They they was talking to one of them and it, it, about taking on the world and it's side eyed. It went like. Like, fuck around and find out. I'm not here for it. All right, y'all. Our boy Dennis Rodman has been out and about and recently shared his new face tattoo dedicated to his girlfriend, Yella Yella. Dennis Rodman said in an interview with TMZ, this is my last dance with a woman. 
and continue with, I thank her for loving me the way I am, and that's why I did it for her. Are we down for this act of love, or is it a not me, girl? Y'all like not me, girl. <laughs> Hell, the fuck no. Get away from me yeah. with this Apollo. No, I'm just not for the face tattoos at all. Al? Well, I'm just glad that he is settling down. His last female is with a black woman. Thank goodness, right? Because he's non-conforming, non-traditional, and usually the black community is not very embracing of that, so... I'm here for it. Dennis Rodman, we work together. I want to get you on this show. That's one of the worst tattoos I have seen in my life. It wasn't even done well. And you got bread like Dennis. Come on, man. They tried. They 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 need to give you a do-over on that one. So I'm giving it a not me girl. Mm-hmm. All right. I want to thank Tammy Townsend for stopping by and Al Reynolds and Funky Danny for killing it as usual. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for The Rising. And we will see you back here tomorrow. Y'all got anything planned for tonight? Y'all stay in the house. I'm so to... I have something to eat. I'm going to go get something to eat. The ESPY Awards are here, Claudia. I'm surprised you're not here. Only because I was traveling back. I was going to go. I, I had an invite. But yeah. next year, I'll be there. See you later, soulmates. Bye. Have a good night. <laughs>